So I really want you guys to like literally write it down. What is a day in the life of your CEO like? What are the demands on them? What are they thinking about? What is the priority for this day, this week, this month, this year for this CEO? So that you can fit what you're trying to communicate into that bigger picture. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this amazing live conversation with my friend, my dear friend, Alice Hyman. Alice, say hello, hello. Hello, hello. I'm excited to be here. Hi, everyone. It's amazing. Uh, my name is Eli Cohen. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Saleshood. And thanks for being here from wherever you are around the world. Today is an amazing conversation. And uh, one of the things we're doing in the industry is we are continuously focusing in on trying to elevate the sales enablement profession. We're trying to help the enablement professionals around the board, around the world be more strategic. And by being more strategic, it means they will have earn a seat at the table. And Alice and I were talking and we're collaborating and just incredible work that she's doing in the industry. She's going to tell you about all the great stuff. But we thought, why don't we help sales enablement professionals win over CEOs? Can't get more strategic than that win over CEOs <laughs> with sales enablement. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. We've got a great session. And before we start, I want to just say a couple words about Alice. And, oh. uh, you know, Alice is world renowned. And I've, I've known Alice for, for many, many years. She's, uh, uh, you know, chief, what was the word? Chief sales energizer, which I love that. <laughs> I love it. She's a thought leader. She's, uh, you know, she, she, she's a speaker around the world and, and uh, she's also a university professor at the University of Nevada, which is amazing. And, and she is uh, an influencer and I think uh, top sales influencer, I think like every year, you know, an, <laughs> an active participant in, in, in many organizations around the world, board member, advisor. And, but the one that I think is so fascinating and we're going to talk about today, sales strategist to CEOs. And, and Alice, I'm sure I missed something in your long list of accolades. And excuse me, but welcome. We love having you. And why don't you start? Tell us, what does it mean to be a sales strategist to CEOs? How does that sound? Yeah, what does that mean? Well, it, it, I think that so many CEOs rise up through the ranks from some other area besides sales, right? So maybe they were in legal, maybe they were in operations, finance. I mean, they just came from some other world besides sales. And so they may not understand sales as completely, you know, as some as a CEO who came from sales, which by the way, only 8% of CEOs rise up through sales ranks. Wow. It's a very small portion, right? And so they may not know or understand sales as well. They know it's important. And of course, that it drives, you know, the company revenue, but they may just not be as familiar with it. And so here they are now as a CEO wearing many hats and really having to drive the company forward. And in many cases, they have investors who really want that sales growth. And yeah. so that CEO definitely um, hires, you know, tries to hire the right people and set the sales organization up, but sometimes they don't have the right strategy. And mm -hmm. so uh, since they don't know sales strategy, what they tend to do more is rely on tactics. And then when the tactics don't produce the results that they need, they're a bit stuck, you know, or they, they kind of level off, they have a couple of flat quarters and then they're going, hmm, What's happening? So as a sales strategist, I'm going to come in and take a look with the CEO at what kind of growth they need, you know, based on what type of exit they're planning and what other things are happening in the marketplace and help them get the best strategy. So they're going to have this vision, right? And that strategy will drive that vision and they can communicate that clearly to the entire organization and especially all of the commercial side, the customer facing people, right? Yeah. And then when people know the clear strategy, they can make it happen. So uh, the strategy is so critical and it's just missing. People sometimes think they're doing strategy when it's actually tactics. So right. uh, that strategy role is so key. Got it. I think I, amazing, right? You're the ultimate enabler in the world. 
You're enabling yes. CEOs <laughs> to be the keepers of growth of sales and really helping them kind of, I didn't know that stat, 8%. I had no idea. Yeah. No, that, that's amazing. There is, there was, um, I think it's Corn Ferry, which, you know, used to own Miller Hyman, my former company. Right. I mean, they do own Miller Hyman, my former company. Um, and they had just put out a report recently about CEOs who came from sales and kind of what the differences are. And then in there, that's where I saw that only 8%, which, yeah, that's, you would, you wouldn't think that, but it's right. very true. Wow. So amazing. Thanks for explaining that. And, and, you know, today what we want to do is, is, you know, remind everyone uh, that as enablement professionals, it's our jobs to, you know, enable the organization. And a lot of the times we want to make sure that we are aligned with the company's top priorities. And, yes. and that's why this topic is here, because what better way than to have a direct line, direct access, regular conversations, to have uh, the ability to collaborate with the CEO, because as, as Alice just said also, turns out they want to be collaborative. They need to be educated as well. So it's our job to help educate them on why sales enablement, why now, what kind of investments to make. But in order for you to be really effective, we want to give you some skills. We want to give you some tips, right, Alice? That's what we're going to do today. I love it. Absolutely. I want you guys all to walk away with stuff you can do today. And let's dig in. Let's, we're going to start by talking about a day in the life of a CEO, because I can tell you something. While, you know, as an enabling professional, the world revolves around me, right? Everything's about enablement. We want to train our people, coach our people, we want to get them the right content. We want to, you know, run boot camps and, and we want to also get everybody aligned. But we got to remember that CEOs, they're kind of busy. And they have a lot of stuff going on. And I thought, I thought maybe Alice could just kind of paint a picture for us of what a day in the life looks like for a CEO. Absolutely. And I want to start by saying that what's important here is to remember that we're all human beings, right? And we all are made up of whatever, you know, our makeup is from the way that we grew up and the way we grew up into corporate America. And so we're just human beings. We wake up every day and try to do the very best job that we can. And that is the same for your CEO. And sometimes I think we have a little bit of this, oh, the CEO, right? Uh, there's some fear around it because yes, they can fire you. It's true, right? <laughs> they are in control of things, uh, but they are also a human who needs feedback, information, insights, support, kudos. I mean, when's the last time you gave your CEO some kudos for doing something that really supported sales and really mattered? We expect our CEOs to give us kudos, right? But right. we have to think about these human beings who also need that support. And so when you are thinking, you know, as a sales enabler, listen, I really need my CEO to understand this. I really need support in this area. I really need leverage. I need um, information. I need dollars, whatever it is. You want to get a seat at the table to talk to them. The first thing I want you to do is just like literally take out a piece of paper and write down what is a day in the life of your CEO like. Now, a day in the life of a CEO is pretty similar in some ways. Like any CEO across, you know, the, the world will have the same types of activities that they have to do because they have to watch over the financial health of the entire company. If there are stakeholders, you know, if it's a public company or if it's a private company and there's shareholders or investors, they have to communicate with them and watch over all of that, right? And then they have all of these departments that they're responsible for making sure have the success that they need. So if you're sitting in the CEO's seat right now and you're writing down, what does my CEO's day look like? What is involved in it? And I would take it even to a personal level to see how well you know your CEO. Does your CEO wake up and swim every day? Does your CEO take the dogs out? Does your CEO have to hustle those kids to school before they can start working? Like, what does the morning of your CEO, your specific CEO look like before they ever, ever even step into their role for that day? I mean, I know some CEOs who are up at five in the morning checking email and you know, cause you're getting emails from them <laughs> at five in the morning or at midnight, right? So think about, they have a life with their family, right? And their community. 
And then they have their business life with all of you. And sometimes those things overlap. So think about that. And then just start at like six o'clock in the morning. What is your CEO's life like? How hurried is it? How hassled is it? Um, is your CEO have a sick family member right now that they're caring for? Um, do they have kids going off to college right now, which can be, you know, extremely emotional. So this is a human being. I want you to think about what their life is like outside of work and just jot some of those things down that may be impacting your particular CEO right now today. And some of those things I think you can have a lot of empathy for because you may have been through some of them yourself. Then will you, where does their day, where does their work day start? If it starts at five when they're checking email and then they go and do their exercise and then they go and take their kids to school or whatever they're doing, right? So their work day is mixed in with their personal. And then their work day starts where people can reach them, right? <laughs> they can Slack them. They can message them on other modalities. They can text them. They can call them. In some cases, they can walk right into their office. Uh, they, there's a lot of ways that people are trying to communicate with that CEO and that CEO is having to absorb all of it and prioritize it. And so that's the thing you have to think about when you think of the day in the life of your CEO, what is their priority that day, that week, that month, that year? And it's a question that you should ask, like, be very curious when you get the opportunity to talk to your CEO and ask them, what are the most important initiatives happening in the company today? What should I be aware of? Because I have to fit my sales enablement initiative inside of what your bigger picture is and what your bigger initiatives are. So I really want you guys to like literally write it down. What is a day in the life of your CEO like? What are the demands on them? What are they thinking about? What is the priority for this day, this week, this month, this year for this CEO? So that you can fit what you're trying to communicate into that bigger picture. Wow. There was a lot there. That was incredible. I, um, I'm a CEO and, and I think folks on my team know that, uh, I, I walk my dog in the morning and then I'm usually biking to work and, uh, it's a good time to reach me and, uh, because it's captive audience and, uh, and then they know I'm, I'm going from a variety of different departmental meetings. The, um, I love that. And I, I hope everyone is really taking that to heart, writing down that story and becoming, I think the word that stood out for me was empathetic. And, uh, yeah. and I think, being empathetic. I think, I think what's interesting is the amount of context switching a CEO does on a regular basis. Yes. Like it's, 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 maybe we should just explain that for a moment. Um, how would you explain that context switching from, from, from like, I guess from, from, from finance one moment to, to sales another moment. And what does that mean to a sales name of professional who shows up one day with a question about something? Right. So context switching is really important for you to understand because you do it all day too, right? But maybe you don't even recognize it. Now I'm not talking about multitasking because that's a whole nother thing we could get into. Just stop doing it, period. But anyway, um, <laughs> context switching is every, and it happens when you multitask, but it also happens when you are doing one task at a time. You do a task you've completed and you've got to completely switch to another task. Now let's think about this for a second. Let's say you're dealing with an HR issue. The HR issue takes a certain part of your brain and maybe more feelings and more empathy and more of a different type of thinking. And you're handling that HR problem. Then there's a finance problem and someone from accounting is calling you. And now you've got to go to a very different part of your brain, a very logical part of your brain, and you've got to move out of that emotional, more emotional empathetic state into a, okay, gosh, uh, let me, okay, this is a, a problem solving. I've got to go through these steps. I'm now using a different part of my brain and I need to have a moment or two to switch that context. And I think for all humans, it would be good if we just recognize that <laughs> because yeah. it is a thing that we do. And for your CEO, so you're busting into their office after you don't know what they were just doing, right? So you might say, hey, I know I'm interrupting you. Do you need a minute? But I, I have something important, but do you need a minute 
let me help you switch context. You know, you can even use those words. Like, I know you were probably right in the middle of something. I need some time. Do you need a minute? Okay, great. Let's get into, let's shift into this new place and have this conversation, right? So you can know what they were just thinking about before you just blah, you know, whatever it is that you've got. Right. And I think it goes into kind of the, the, the next year I want to get to with, with us on this is kind of speaking the language of the CEO. And so let's, let's take that, let's take that example. And, you know, you walk into a CEO's office or you call them because they've got an open door policy and you can call them or text them. And then your CEO replies and says, right. call me. And, and you've got a choice at that moment in time, you can get to the heart of what you want to talk about, which I, I may not know what you're talking about, or you can just set the context and say, Hey, we're going to talk about, you know, onboarding. And, and, and we're going to talk about it because it's so critical to the business right now. We've got to ramp our teams. And I've got a question I got to ask you to get your support. That's an example, right? I was like, yeah, yeah. Of, of, of kind of helping, you know, like to, to help. So how, how, how can we help sales enable people do a better job speaking the language of CEOs? Yes. So let's back it up just a little bit to something we were just talking about a, a minute ago. Good. It's hard to speak the language of the CEO when you don't know what it is. I and love you it. don't know what their initiatives are, right? So if we go back to, as a sales enablement professional, speak to your CEO, the C-suite, whoever's kind of in the know about the, the bigger initiatives. It just, just FYI, sometimes it's right on your own website. So go look for it there. Like this, the message from the president or the CEO could be right on your website, your, your initiatives um, that, that you have for the year, especially if you're a public company or if you're one of those B Corps or a kind of company who just basically puts their values and all of you know what their initiatives are right on your website. So go look to see if the information is available. If you're a public company, read your 10K in your annual report, please, as a sales enablement um, specialist, you know, you should know what's in that 10K in that annual report. So back up the bus a little bit and just get more familiar <laughs> with your company and the initiatives at the company and what is on the CEO's mind at this time. So maybe we have this bigger initiative and there's this piece and it's really a focus for the CEO right now. So if that's the case, and then you know all of that, Plus, now you know a little bit more about the human that has the title CEO. Then it's a little bit easier to speak CEO, right? Because right. not only do you need to speak CEO in general, like what does a CEO care about, but you need to speak the specific language of your CEO. So uh, maybe your CEO is more extroverted more introverted. Maybe they're a more logical thinker. Maybe they're a more emotional thinker. So anything you can know about your CEO will help you communicate better. Um, but I think what you said uh, just before is like, come in and don't think they don't start in the middle. Don't think they know what you're talking about. Okay. First of all, prepare, 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 because they, the CEO doesn't have time. So you, you come in and you want to get straight to the point because you know your CEO doesn't have time, but then they have no context and they can't really understand and they can't make a good decision. Get your words ready so you can be quick and concise. I'm here today because I need, I'm going to explain to you why and how, and I'm going to, you know, ask you at the end, what do you, what you would like to do? So now you're set, like, this is, this is why I'm here. This is what I need. And by the end, we have to be here. Okay, how many minutes do we have? 10, 15, whatever. Check in on that. Great. Perfect. Um, then you can set the context for them and say, we're here in this space right now because of what's going on in the marketplace. And so what I've worked with the team on is how can we move forward? It looks like this. Do you want to discuss that or are you good? Okay. Now, good. based on that, what do you want to do next? Or we need the budget for, or whatever your ask is. Now, sometimes your ask may be something that's a little fuzzy, or it's like, I need your help because I can't get everybody on board with this, right? That could be a little bit of a fuzzier ask than I need a budget, I need some time, I need the people, resources, whatever. It's like, I'm trying to, I need your help. 
getting people on board. Now, this is often what sales enablement people actually need. And, and I've got a situation going on like this right now in one of my clients where this, the C-level people met and talked about this growth strategy and they were all on a different page, completely on a different page. Well, then they, we rolled right into the sales meeting that I was a part of, right? The national sales meeting, people from all over the world, you know, um, in the sales meeting. And we are not aligned with the senior team on what the strategy is. Ah, right. So you, you have to um, understand that. The CEO has these issues too. They're trying to get people aligned, right? But you can't move your sales enablement initiatives forward unless you have alignment. But it's more than just a CEO. Like line up your allies. Mm. Who in your company can you line up and help them understand why these initiatives are important, what the salespeople need, why they need support from marketing, from customer success, from operations, from finance. Get your people aligned so that then when you go to the CEO, you can say, we're aligned on this. Or if you're having trouble getting them aligned, you can go and say, I'm having trouble getting everyone aligned. Here's why. And here's the help I need from you. It's it's a lesson I learned a long, long time ago when I actually was a teacher. I wasn't in business. And all of the teachers were complaining about something. And they would go to the principal and complain. And I was the reading specialist. And I was sort of like the vice principal as well. And so I would hear all of this. And then I'd look at the, the principal and I'd say, well, what are you going to do about it? And he would say to me, they did not ask me to do anything. Mm. And he did nothing because they walked in and complained about this and complained about that. They had no solutions. They had no ideas. They were just complaining and they didn't even say, would you fix it? Or how yeah. can we fix it? They said nothing. And so the, so the CEO of the school, which is a principal said, I do nothing. So be careful. You go in and talk to your CEO and you think you left perfectly well knowing that something was going to happen next and nothing happens because you didn't specifically say, Here's what I need you to do next. Or here's where I need your help. You thought you said that because, well, I told them all what the problem was and I told them exactly blah, 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 blah. And I just figured she would do this next. But she didn't because she didn't hear you ask. And yep. she has a lot of other initiatives on her plate. So she left yours alone. Didn't become a priority. So be careful. Ask for what you need very specifically. I uh, I love it. There are some questions I'm going to get to in yeah, a second. Yeah. I think I think uh, alignment is so interesting. I uh, I remember a few years ago when when I was back at Salesforce. Um, you know, I uh, I walked in to Mark's office, Benny off, and uh, you know I needed help with an initiative, and uh, and he he asked me a couple of questions, what the challenges were, and his reply to me was write a quick email. And, in, and, and structure it this way, just a couple mm -hmm. sentences, mm -hmm. give me a nice picture and I'll take care of the rest. And, uh, and I said, oh, that sounds easy because I got it. And then, you know, I wrote it up and then boom, he forwarded it to the whole company. And he said, let's get behind this. Like, you know, I think it's super interesting to make that ask. It was, it was to get alignment and, and alignment is something that is uh, really hard to do. And, and, uh, and I think you said a few things get folks aligned ahead of time, get your sales leaders aligned, marketing leaders, ops leaders. I think those are all people. A question came up, which is what happens? Yeah, let me just say one quick thing about that before you do that question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes like in that case, he said, he, you know, you, he asked you to write the quick email or did he say he'd write it? Uh, I, I gave him a challenge. I, I told him a challenge that I was facing in, in the organization with an initiative. And he said, Good. Can you, can you write a quick email? Perfect. So think about this. Sometimes if you, you can make it easier for your CEO by saying, how about I write it up, but then it can actually come from them. So again, if you know how they think you can write it as if you are them, it's all done for them. And then they just have to send it out. So think about how you can make it easy for your CEO to help you is which is what he helped you do. He said, make it easy totally. for me, Eli, just write it and then send it to me and then let's go. So I love it. Okay. Question. 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 So, okay. We've talked about alignment and it's great. 
what happens and 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 how does a well what happens if you don't have alignment and, and in a sales enabling professional that may report to a CRO, may report to an SVP of RevOps, may report to whoever, marketing HR leader, I, how would you guide them to kind of go around their chain of command and going to the CEO? What, what kind of guidance would you give a sales I, I, I That's what I'm feeling too, but let's hear you. Yeah. So it's always hard to go around people because you're risking, right? So it depends, right? If you have to decide how big of a risk are you willing to take? Yep. So if it's really important and you can't get alignment and you can't get the people that you need to, and you've got to go around somebody, then make sure it's really important and it's worth the risk because, you know, the CEO could just look right at you and go, go back to the person <laughs> and get out of my office, right? <laughs> so I think that's- Or, that's or Alice, here's what could happen also. Wow, I think that's super interesting, Eli, uh, Alice. Uh, let's just dial, go dial, go dial Bob. Let's right. just, why don't you say this to Bob right now? So whatever you say, you need to assume that your CEO will share it verbatim to the leaders because what does a CEO right. want? CEO needs alignment. And when there's right. any semblance of alignment, and if you've done your job and you're you're exposing something, which is fine, but but you're, it's risky, right? And just be mindful of that. I love that word. It is risky. risky. And so what you what you want to think about is just like if you were making a sale to a customer, in in you know in Miller Hyman speak, we'd say what are the win results? So there's a business result that everybody needs to get to keep their job, right? <laughs> I've got to do these things or I don't have a job anymore. So, and for each initiative or each project or each thing that somebody's doing, there's a result they're trying to get. And that's the business part of it. But there's a win behind it, which is the personal part. If I get this done, I might get a raise. If I get this done, I'll get some kudos. If I get this done, I get to do these things also. Um, so there's a win behind it, or it could be just like a deep sense of per personal satisfaction that you push something over the finish line. So when you feel like you need to go around someone before you do that, think about why are they pushing back on you, right? Are they just so overwhelmed in their own world, right? That they think, oh my gosh, this is going to give me so much more work, but they can't express that to you or are afraid to express that to you. So they're just, oh no, that won't work. Or I don't want to do that. Or we're not going to do that or whatever their answer is. Um, think about being more curious with them and saying, oh, I understand you don't have time for this. I understand you don't agree with me. Tell me more about that because this initiative is really important to me. So I really want to understand from you. So, you know, this is basic communication. You need to do this with your customers as well as with your internal customers, the stakeholders, right? Who you really want to help you so you can enable sellers to sell more. You know, it's really today, especially about customer engagement. So sometimes just framing it differently, we as sales enablers can frame up for the ops people, the marketing people, the finance people, whoever we have to frame it differently. So instead of talking about your sellers and your internal stuff, maybe frame it as our customers need, and therefore I am enabling sellers to provide mm. versus I need to, I need to onboard the sellers faster and I need to have the money and I need more people. And, you know, I need for our sellers and we, us, I, yeah. Stop that, no. start saying our customers deserve a higher level of engagement. So we need more people in this department or that department. Our customers need a better explanation. So I, we need a sales engineer who can give that because our salespeople just aren't that technical. So change the perspective, you know? Be be curious, first of all, about why are they not with you? Why are they not aligned? Be curious, yep. but then change the perspective. Well, you know, this is really about our customer. So I would like to help our customers. And this initiative is the way to do it. No, it's great. It's great. And, and so I'd like to kind of go into another area. If you're ready, I'd like to talk about metrics a little bit because framing up requests Framing up asks, speaking strategically, you know, we, we, we still need to be data driven. 
And I think one of the areas that sales name and professionals are, uh, I, you know, it's it's newer to us. You know, we're, we're we're trainers, we're coaches, we're creative, we run boot camps, we build playbooks, we love it. But it's a little out of our comfort zone to speak strategically about business impact and outcomes. And maybe you can take kind of that buyer enablement, that buyer's journey and that conversation and maybe feed us a little bit of, you know, metrics. Like what are some metrics that matter to CEOs so we can frame up our request a little better? Well, I think, you know, it's interesting the way you phrase that because it made me think immediately your CEO is a buyer. They're a buyer of your ideas. Uh, right? Yeah. They're a buyer of funding the projects that you want them to fund, right? So they are on a journey as well. And that their buyer journey to get everybody aligned for you, to get you funded, to get the people in there, whatever it is you're asking them for. Maybe it's a culture change, which is a bigger initiative even, right? Yeah. They're a buyer and they're on a journey and they're somewhere in that journey, right? So if if they're going to approve whatever it is you're asking them for, um, they have to have some metrics that matter. Now, those metrics have to matter to them, not to you, not to salespeople, not to marketing, but the metrics have to matter to the CEO. So back again to what is the day in the life of a CEO like? How do they keep the other stakeholders happy, the C-suite, the investors, the shareholders, whoever they have to keep happy, what metrics are going to allow them to do their job better? They may not be the same metrics that allow the sales leader to be a better sales coach. They need a different set of metrics, right? So uh, I think right now, especially, uh, we are measuring the wrong things <laughs> in the sales world. Uh, we're, we, we need to change. We need to look at things from a different perspective. And again, go, going back to the customer's perspective and how do we help the customer so they buy more from us, they come, become more loyal, they become a walking advertisement and introduce us to people, right? Isn't that a dream come true when your customers are bringing you customers? So yeah. from the CEO's point of view, what metrics help them know that the customer is succeeding with your product or service? What metrics help the CEO speak to the shareholders? It's not how many dials, it's not you know how, how many emails we sent out. None of that matters to a CEO. The results matter, but here's a clue that everybody needs to pick up on. Revenue numbers, right? The goal, we hit the goal or we didn't hit the goal. The number is a lagging indicator. It's too late by the time we, oh, so it's the end of the quarter, we didn't hit the number. It's too late. It's now too late. we're playing catch up. So CEOs don't, lagging indicators help them, not at all. <laughs> I mean, what they help them do is cut the budget and fire people because you didn't get there. They need to know far before you didn't get there, whether you're going to get there or not. And so what measures can you put in place? What metrics can you talk to them about that tell them whether you're getting there or not before that we didn't hit the number lagging indicator slaps everybody in the face and then all the bad stuff happens that we didn't want to happen. So with your team, you really need to sit down and think about what are those things and, and ask your CEO, like, what would be the magic? You know, what, if you knew these things, how could you do your job better? And then go backwards and figure out how to see if you can get that information in their hands. So yeah. at every company, it's going to be a little bit different, but think about what really matters to that CEO and what will help them do their job better and communicate and know that the health of their business is stable because the customers are succeeding. The um, I love that. This is an MBA in working with CEOs. You you, you are spectacular and uh, really really inspirational and, and full of amazing knowledge. We could go on all day. I uh, so I want to talk about one thing around leading indicators. I think you're right. No question, we're measuring the wrong things. Looking at quota attainment, looking at revenue uh, as a lagging. It's over. It's done. If you've missed it, things are going to get shocked. 
And, right. and so that's that's bad. And so therefore, you know, some of the metrics we want to look at pre, right? So if you're a hyper growth company and you're hiring 10, 20 new people, quarterly basis, monthly basis, right? What can we measure earlier, Alice, right? We can measure what percentage of my new cohort of sellers are closing a deal or what percentage of them are hitting quota in what clip of time? Because I know I've got everything else lined up. We've got pipeline creation lined up. We've got all the things that we need to do from a, from a pipe to close metrics because that's why I hired all these people. Now just give me the confidence, right? And you can even go a step further if, if the issue is recruiting, right? So you can see here, you got to be strategic about where you're looking and then speak in that language. I love it. And uh, right, time time to ramp is an important one. The percentage right. of reps, right? what would you say? That's, a good, that's better than a lagging one, right? That's better than a revenue. Well, time to ramp is really important. And uh, quite frankly, the CEO doesn't care that much about the time to ramp as much as they care about the results they can expect because right. of the ramp, right? So if you say, I can take time to ramp from eight months to six months, that's great. But that doesn't mean anything. But what is it, him, right? So what does that them, mean to the to CEO? It means that we get 20% more X, Y, Z because we cut that time down. Um, it means we need to hire less salespeople, which saves us money, right? I mean, yep. you know, think about it. If you could make each one of your salespeople ramp up 20% faster, how what that how that impacts revenue. Think if you could make each one of your salespeople 20% more effective, how much more revenue that is. So that's where you have to go. It's like if you say, oh, we're gonna, we're gonna. With this money, we're going to change our onboarding. So instead of eight months, it's six months. Okay, so what? What does that mean to me? What does that mean to our customers? What does that mean to our board of directors? You've got to get that language down. Absolutely, absolutely. I think I can't believe it's already been thirty-five minutes, Alice. It's, it's amazing. I, I before we wind down, I wanted to just uh, let everyone know that. Uh, this is I, I look at this as the beginning of a, con, of a of a continued conversation that that Alice and Saleshood and and my team and I are having because it's that important to help each and every one of you kind of elevate how you're how you're working with CEOs and we're just scratching the surface on tips. We're going to turn this into an amazing <laughs> ebook and there's a lot more coming. But in the short term, some of you may be thinking, well, well, I I, I need more help, and so there's two ways that we can support you. Number one, we do have the ability to support you to help build a business plan, to help build a strategic business case. So where you can present that information uh, more strategically to your stakeholders, to your buyers, who are your CEOs yes. and all those. So number one, if anyone is interested in, 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 in help building a business case, and it's not necessarily for saleshood, it's not necessarily for our platform. Yes, we'd love you to buy saleshood, but it's for resources. It's to grow your team. It's to make decisions to get into new markets. We've got a model with a lot of these metrics baked in. So that's number one. Number two, we do have a course and it's called the Sales Enablement Leadership Course. So if anyone wants to go a little deeper and explore some of these topics about being strategic, building business cases, gravitas, better executive level communications, yes. please, 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 you'll see the link in the feed there and you can sign up for that as well. Those are, those are two things. And Alice, if anyone on the call is interested in getting you plugged in to their CEO, how would they reach you? Yeah, absolutely. Just go to my website, but it's it's super easy. You can find me on LinkedIn. Um, you can email me alice at alicehyman.com. As long as you spell it right, it gets there. Yeah, good. <laughs> so um, please reach out. But I will, I'll give you, it's a small plug, but also a, a, something you can use. I launched a podcast and I talked to CEOs about sales and how they build their sales organizations. And if you listen to those, you might get some ideas from those CEOs for your own CEO. And you could just maybe forward them the podcast and say, hey, this, this CEO has a really great idea that might work at our company. Can we discuss it? So find other things like that. Like there's, uh, Saleshood has a ton of free resources. I have free resources on my, page, on my uh, blog and so many other companies as well. Share that information with your CEO, but I'm going to give you a small tip. Make yep. it digestible. So if you want to send them an article or a podcast or anything, you say, there are three things in this podcast I thought were important. One, two, three. And then here's the link if you want to listen. 
or here's the link if you want to read. Make it easy for them to digest it because we know how busy they are. Absolutely. And, and even include a picture, a yeah. screenshot of something really goes a long way. So what final words? Like, let me ask you the question. How can sales enabling professionals, how would you kind of summarize what are the things that they can do, the, the essence of, of what we discussed today to really, truly earn a seat at the table? How yeah, would you I think that? you really have to start thinking like a CEO. And in many ways you are, because if you think, what is a CEO? You're in charge of this unit, right? And you have to deal with all of the things that are in this unit. And so if you just start to think more like a CEO, read some things that a CEO might read, think, try to think like a CEO, talk to other CEOs that you happen to know and ask them. And if your CEO is open to it, have a conversation with them about how you can support them, how they think, what's important to them. So really try to get into that day in the life of. And then secondly, get your allies lined up yep. and speak their language and help them understand how to support the sales initiatives that you really need them to support. Because sometimes they just simply don't understand. It's amazing to me that still in this day and age, People who don't work in sales have the strangest ideas about what salespeople do and how they do it. They just really don't understand. So help them understand and, and rally them around, right? And then remember to think about when you ask for something, be specific about what you're asking for and make it easy for your CEO to do that, right? And then think about the metrics that they need to talk to the people they have to talk to and to make sure that the customers are, of course, supremely happy. So if you do all of those things, you're really going to be the leader of and be seen as that person they need to sit at the table. It's amazing. Last piece of advice I'm going to give in addition to everything Alice said is, you know, CEOs, you got to give them information that they can't get on their own. Right, sales enabling professionals are unique. You're the, the we're, we're the glue that kind of holds teams together, <laughs> processes together. We're we're really we're touching everyone because we're touching all teams, we're touching product, we're touching support, we're touching ops, we're touching reps. Man, like we're we're all over the place. And so when we're sitting down with executives and CEOs, I think it's important to be data driven, factual, being clear, being concise, but also have some insights that that only you can glean. This is what I've seen. Here are some examples of, of, of things I've seen. Of, and, and have those stories. Have them be real. Be, be the voice. Be the face of the sales organization. And then you will always earn that seat deal because people are going to want you there because they're going to need your insights. They're going to trust you and need you. And amazing. I want to just give you, Alice, a, a big, warm round of applause. Thank, thank you, you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Um, I guess last plug, we've got people on here. What's next for you? What do you, what, what's, what's on tap for you? Any new, any events coming up for you? What's, I guess your podcast, like uh, one last, one last uh, plug for you. Yeah. My podcast is really my focus right now. I, my book is almost finished. I'm hoping to have it published by the oh end of the year. Oh my gosh. So that will be for CEOs too. So um, it will be exciting. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We didn't go there. Tell me about your book. <laughs> well, my book is specifically for CEOs and uh, it's uh, this, similar to my podcast. It's really like, what do they need to know about sales in order to enable their team to be successful, in order to enable their customers to be successful? Because again, only 8%, I think, I don't know if we said that we were talking yeah. about it earlier, but only 8% of CEOs have a sales background. So most CEOs don't have a sales background. And they've had to learn a lot of different things to be a CEO because there's no way to learn to be a CEO other than just being one, right? So you're learning while you're going. And sales doesn't tend to be one of the things that they necessarily focus on learning well. And if they have never done the selling, you know, it's it's hard. They, ha they have to learn it somehow. So uh, trying to help CEOs explore what they need to know about sales to really help their company be highly successful. Do you, have a name, do you have a name yet for the book? Uh, I'm still Don't kind worry. of uh, working on it. It's Listen, sort of like we we we're excited. What we're excited to know. <laughs> I, I Alice, congrats on that. That's amazing, and we can't wait to read it and help you promote it and really get the word out. Thank so uh, everybody, thank you, Alice. Sending you a big virtual hug, and can't wait to see you in person soon. And I know everybody, that'd be thank so you. great.
It'll happen. Everybody, It'll thank happen. you, thank you. Winning over CEOs, amazing tips, amazing advice from the one and only Alice Hyman. Thank <laughs> you so much for spending time with us today. My Be pleasure. Well, everyone. It's, it's been great. And please reach out to me, everyone, if you have any questions. I can't wait to hear from you.